figure a better transition of music it just feels like it drops off there <laughs> but this is the first episode and i am not lying when i say this i started doing these shows back in 2018 it was august september of 2018 and i had actually reached out to tanya and i said listen i am doing these shows i want you on and at that time she was busy and we're going to talk about that because she does she goes to all these great shows and concert <laughs> sheets and she's always everywhere and um, as things went on, things just didn't work out. Well, we're here. And mm -hmm. I have this. And listen, the Touring Fan Live was created because it is about people that go out in the world. They follow their favorite artist. They follow their favorite band. They follow their favorite influencers. And it's about that community that bonds us. And if there's anybody that I know personally that represents that really well, it's Tanya. And mm -hmm. I'm really excited for the first ever episode of Hitchhiker, Stories from the Road. I am so what were three years in the making, Tanya, welcome finally to <laughs> being a guest on one of my shows. Yay, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, so I'm glad we finally made it work. Isn't it crazy that it took a pandemic to get you to come on the show? I guess because there's no, nothing for you to go out and see in this world that we can get you in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, looking forward to finally getting back to some live shows later this year. Well, it's, you know, in the last two weeks, a lot of shows are coming out with, you know, and Nine Inch Nails announced a tour, a couple shows last week. You know, Rage Against the Machine, rescheduled dates, Roger Waters, you know, My Morning Jack with some festival shows, Pearl Jam with See Here Now Festival, which they've really pushed this week. It just seems like, you know, the things aren't normal yet, and it's going to be a long time before it gets normal, but it's starting to feel like things are starting to turn the corner. Yeah, exactly. Like a little like resemblance of normalcy is kind of coming back. So I think it's making a lot of people feel hopeful and feel good. So, so yeah. I'm going to ask you a real simple question and I, okay. I think it's simple. You know, <laughs> I've known you for a real long time and I know music is a big part of your life. Um, and we all, and it's for everybody, but why is music so special to you? Uh, so like a short answer, or the long answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, when I first got into music, where it, where it became a big part of my life, that it was when I was in high school, and um, we had moved around a lot growing up, and I just um, we just we were living overseas in Singapore, and we had moved back um, to West Virginia, so it was kind of a hard reverse culture shock coming back, um, and. I guess I just felt kind of lost and lonely and I, you know, I needed something to turn to and music found me. So I had seen Pearl Jam, some, I don't know who I was listen, listening in, but some people probably heard this story, but um, I spurred my first Pearl Jam concert. I was 12 and when we lived in Singapore, but I wasn't really a fan then. Like my brother was into it and my sister and they were like, Oh, let's go. And I was like, Oh, cool. I know like Jeremy and daughter. And that was about it. This was um, 1995. I was 12. And then, so fast forward two or three years, we moved back to the States and 
um, I was on like this um, like high school um, weekend trip and I remember I saw a billboard for Yield and I was like, oh yeah, Pearl Jam, they have a new album out. So no, I, no code went over my head. I didn't even know that had happened. And I, so I saw um, the billboard for Yield and I was like, oh, I should go, you know, pick up that album and check it out. And so this is why, this is from that moment um, when I bought the CD, I brought it home and I, you know, hit play and I heard the first few notes of Brain of Jay. Um, that was it. So Brain of Jay is my favorite song for those of you who don't know. And it's because of that, like literally, like it's kind of like cliche, but that you hear the explosion um, sounds at the beginning of the song. Like that's what was happening to my mind. It was like being bling, being blown up and I was just like, okay, that's it. And that's, I just knew that's, you know, music was going to be a part of my life from that moment on. And that's, I think that's why it means so much to me because it's just always there, you know, whenever you need it, you can just turn to it. Well, it's, you know, in life, unfortunately things, you know, people can come and go when they want and you can't control that music is always there. Like it's something you can tangibly have and it's something that you don't ever have to worry about you le like leaving you and stuff. So like for me, I was in the same boat as you, like, you know, I moved around a lot. I, you know, I was the most popular person. People didn't like me. They still don't like me. So I have music <laughs> that, you know, I feel like that likes me. Um, so I get it. It's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's kind of the same path. I completely understand what you're saying. S so we understand your, you love a Pearl Jam, but you know, for me personally, like I know you through so many other bands. Um, what yeah, we started just running into each other at other shows and it was like, oh, hey, you're at my yeah. wedding jacket. Oh, hey, you're also at this show. Or we just run into each other at a show and are ex wearing the exact same T-shirt. Um, <laughs> I'll never forget that one. Um, Washington, D.C., um, R&DM show. Um, I bump into you in, 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 I guess, the street. Um, and I look at you and you look at me and we said, I was with my son and we were in the yeah. exact same My Morning Jacket yeah. T-shirt. And it was yeah, not even, was, yeah. it wasn't even for the, the tour either. It was just like a yeah. random T-shirt. Yeah. That was a crazy day. Um, speaking of shows, because that was when I was doing um, fan I was taking um, Richard's fan portrait mm -hmm. out in the middle of the street <laughs> with his drum. <laughs> yes, I do remember that. He wrote his lyrics on the the, the drum. Snare. You know? Yeah, yeah, he was on the snare. Like, I, I remember that. I remember like you were trying so hard to get Joseph Arthur to be involved in this, and he just was like, Meh. like he just was like very nonchalant about everything. It's just I don't and know. Jeff I was there, it was there and just laughing at what Richard was doing. And I was like, Hey, do you want to do one too? And he was like, I got to go get coffee. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Cause then we, there was a place next to it. That was like a really interesting yeah. retreat. It was a crazy, this venue was like in the worst part of DC. And, yeah. and like, it was, it was a very interesting, um, like Brady was literally sitting on the stage and like right next to his body was Jeff immense feet. Like it was, it, there was no, it was really weird. One of those, yeah, small, tiny bar type shows. But that's what's so great about music is like, or well, live music on a concert is that how all these stories unfold. You, you know, you look forward to going to the show and you're just like, okay, I'm going to have a great time. And then you just meet all these people or all these things happen or you happen to meet the band. Like, you just don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> so well, that's part of the excitement. Well, the cool thing about you is like, as so the first time I met you was in 2013 um, in Philadelphia. Uh, 2012. 2012. See, I'm glad that you can see. That's why you can straighten me out. At least, you know, dates better. I never, I never said I was good at this stuff. <laughs> 2012 Philadelphia made in America festival. It was my son's first show and my wife's first show. Yeah. Both at our first Pearl Jam show. And I know that it was advertisements for, you know, you were taking photos and I remember when I, I had it, I felt like I must've been one of the first people you photographed too. Cause there was like, you were like, there were still nerves but I remember you took me into like oh, this random parking garage to take the picture in this like dark <laughs> setting and you were messing with the, the settings. And um, and it was raining, like drizzling a bit too. Yeah, yeah. And that Cameron had just walked by like a few minutes, like 10, 15 minutes before that. So I was freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like this. And it was a, and there was a lot of people at the pre-party as well. Yeah. Huge. And, and it was great. But I remember you took the photos and um, you you sent them to me, and we we got close then. And it was interesting. From every show after that, ninety five percent of them, you were there. And it was like this. And it was kind of like this, like 
we always had this connection where we would like catch. It was like that was our moment to catch up. We always had time to like and we'd catch up about life. And because you had you had met my son, you were there for his first show, and mm-hmm. you would ask, and you had yeah. met my wife. You were one of the you're one of the few people that actually know that I'm really married and my wife's real. Um, <laughs> so it was always cool, and it's like I love sitting back and like it was. I always enjoyed like watching you travel and these stories that you would have like photographing musicians that we both loved um and like having them be a part of of fan portraits and you know because first it was pearl jam fan portraits and then it moved into you know fan portraits and it was like this beautiful thing because what you were doing was giving the ability um to have people interpret a song and their lyrics into a moment for them like something that matters to them Um, Mm -hmm. and it was interesting to always see like people that we knew take this piece of paper, write down a lyric that meant something to them and then share it because sometimes you wouldn't associate that person with that, but then Mm -hmm. it it made sense afterwards. Um, What, what made you, or where did the idea come from for you to create, you know, what was Pearl Jam portraits at first? So it's just, so it was the, um, that summer before, so yeah, Pearl Jam played Made in America Festival in Philly in September. And for those who don't know, I live in Delaware, so I'm like 45 minutes from Philly. So anytime they come to Philly, I'm going to go see them. And they didn't do like a big tour in the U.S. that year. So there was just like, a, I don't remember. Um, I'm usually good with the concert chronology, but I can't remember what else they did that year. They did, but they there did. wasn't a lot in the States, so. Was it Made in America that did the one in Atlanta, um, the yeah. orange one? Then they did the one in Jacksonville. And then they did New Orleans, I think, that jazz festival. And then they think they did Seattle. It wasn't many that year. It was four or five shows. Yeah. So, um, and I was like in between things and I wasn't in a place where I could travel to see him that year. And um, I, I don't know. I was just in a, um, like a transitional period in my life that summer. I um, had um, actually, I, I had moved to Seattle in 2011 to start graduate school. And I was like, oh, I'm in Seattle. I'm going to love it. But, and I did love Seattle, but um you know, that's a whole other story, but I ended up moving back East and I kind of just was in that another place in my life where I was like, okay, well, what am I going to do now? I'm lost. I'm not going to do grad school. Um, and I'd always been interested in photography. So I've been doing photography for years. I just always, you know, I started, I learned on, um, film and in the dark room and, um, I just always had a passion for it. Sure. And so my, so I was, just kind of like thinking about it, like, okay, my two passions in life are photography and music. So how can I combine my interests? And I always, um, like, I mean, you've already kind of talked about this, about how, um, like how we meet up, we see each other at shows and that's just a big part of the experience is getting to see your friends at the concerts and meeting other fans and, um, a band like Pearl Jam, they're a band that they know how much their fans mean to them. And that's also like my morning jacket and other bands that I'm drawn to. There's that reciprocal kind of connection. Yeah. And so I wanted to somehow capture that, like capture this um, meaning between the bands and the fans and how the fans, um, you know, like the music and the lyrics and everything just means so much to them. So how can I kind of document this or capture this, that connection and how, um, Cause if I were just to take a picture of you, unless you're wearing like a Pearl Jam shirt, how do you stand out as a Pearl Jam fan or, a, you know, whichever band. So that's really where it came from. I wasn't like, I was like, you know, sitting down like, okay, I have to come up with something. I determined to do something. It really, I was just kind of in this headspace and it just kind of came to me one day. And then I like ran it by my close group of friends who I've been going to shows with, you know, since to the early 2000s, 2002, or 2003 actually was what our group started. And I was like, is this dorky? Like, do you think people will like this? And that's kind of how it started. <laughs> so they were like my guinea pigs. So it's, it's, been, it's been crazy. Like all the people, I mean, for me, the best part about it is all the places it's taken me to and all the people I've gotten to meet and hearing people's stories about what the line that they choose, like the lyric, they choose what it means to them. Like, mm. cause they're a cancer survivor and they're still alive or sure. you know, they just got met married and they finally met their soulmate. And, you know, they chose um, smile to be their wedding song. That's a shout out to um, some friends who are hopefully tuning in. <laughs> I, I did their wedding photos and they did a wedding uh, fan for Pearl Jam fan portraits. So. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That, that, that is great. Um, I know 
that I have done, I believe, nine fan portraits with you, which I don't know if that's a oh, record. Really? I don't know if it's a record, but I'm going for it. Um, might be. It's close, but yeah, it might have. I can think of a couple of people who might have you beat. <laughs> uh, before, but I just want to get. I just want to give us a quick shout out to Randy. Uh, from Live on Four Legs podcast, um, who gave this. So Made in America Fest with DeLuna, Music Midtown, Missoula, and Treasure Island oh, was 2012. I so, forgot about Missoula. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. – and what a beautiful part of the country, P.S. Like, if you haven't seen Pearl Jam Missoula, you need to. Um, <laughs> right? Ju- yeah, definitely. But, no, you know, the one great thing about, um, you know – like, I spent a lot of time with you in 2016 when yeah, you were doing fan- at, at Fenway. Yeah. Green, uh, in Greenville too. Greenville, that's right. That was um, line, the DA line or Hampton. Hampton. It's probably all the above. <laughs> all the above. God, Hampton was the inter- you know it's funny Hampton show for me. I had so many friends I had no idea we were going to be in that line, and we all were at the exact same spot at the same time. And the stories from that, but I don't want to ruin it because I'd like to have one of them come on and talk about like the 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 the, the guy that almost overdosed in this guy's tent and like all these crazy stories. But um, no. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I, I've seen you so many places, but it was always such like, it was great because I knew like there was that time, like we, I get to catch up, like, cause y- your first question is like, Hey, how's Brady doing? Like you always like, how's Brady doing? And how's your wife? Like there was always that sincerity. And then, you know, it grew too. Cause we started like messaging on Facebook and we talk about things and we kept up with, with it and it was amazing. Um, and I, I found it funny. I talked about this before the show. It's like, it took music to stop for you to get pregnant and to get married. Um, so, cause they, no band can roll you in to a tour. So like, you're like, you know what? Eh, maybe I'll start doing some other life things right now. <laughs> yeah. We were joking about that before we went <laughs> live. Cause it was like COVID happened. It was like, surprise, I'm married. And now I have a son. I would, um, he's, the, he's sleeping right now. That's why I'm able <laughs> to be on here doing this. But um, yeah, I can't, um, and seeing people like you, like my friends who, you know, have taken their kids to so, so many concerts and watch them get into music or have that experience, um, that's, I'm really looking forward to being able to do that with my son once he gets older. So it's well, been, yeah. like you have your, your feelings for music and what it means to you. And I do too. It's, it was interesting. Like Brady's been to quite a few Pearl Jam shows. My daughter hasn't, but I took her to go see Flaming Lips. Um, like right in the pit. And that was an interesting experience. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's and she loved it because unicorns and, they're t- and all these lights and balloons and not realizing they're talking about like LSD and pot and, you know, and <laughs> yeah. whatever. And but it's you know, that's what it's about. It's about like living that moment because it's it's those moments in life that you get to share your passion with somebody and like pass that off. That's, that's what it's all about to me. Like that's what that's beautiful about music. Like there's a lot of things I listen to. Now that I think back to like, I remember my dad who my dad's very young, like he had me when he was 16. So like growing up, like his influence in music was very influential to me because like he, I remember him like putting downward spiral on nine inch nails in his like Mitsubishi eclipse back in the day. So he's got his little five speed mitts and he was like, it was like, that was cool. So like that resonated with me. And like now, like I do the same thing with my kid. Like the other day, my son is, you know, big into soccer and he, get, he likes to listen to his hype music. He's like, let's listen. He wanted to listen to a rap song. And he puts on this thing from like recent. I'm like, this is not rap. Like, this is not hip hop. This is this is garbage. So I ended up putting Wu-Tang on for him. Um, and that was, <laughs> you know, it was interesting. It's like interesting to see like, you know, different things, like how your kids react to what you're into. But I think you're going to realize, especially as much as you love music. And um, I know you love uh, your son, which, um, by the way, early, um, late happy late Mother's Day. Um, first Mother's Day. That's a, a pretty special one. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, my husband's into music, too. So it's going to be interesting. We cross over with some things and then we have things that like he's more into and that I'm more into. So it'll be interesting to see what our son ends up <laughs> being into. So, so what, is your, what is your husband's like top three bands? Oh gosh. He's probably over there listening to me. I better get it right. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, David Bowie for sure is his oh. number one. Um, and um, I know Gosh, I'm trying. I, don't, I know Nine Inch Nails is up there too. Like um, when he was talking about Downward Spiral, and then um, oh gosh, uh, he loves Depeche Mode. He loves Kraftwerk. Those are that's I'm going over three, but there's like a bunch up there. <laughs> no, that's good. That's, I, I feel like I could get along with this guy. That's actually some yeah. really good music. Um, now, when you think of your top three bands, I bet you I can name 
I bet you I can name them. You can probably name the three. <laughs> I bet. So number one's Pearl Jam, right? Well, yeah. It, and it's, it's either them <laughs> or it's... Tied. it's uh, I, I have my, like three tied favorites. Because <laughs> I know, I feel like Slender Kenny is work. definitely in there. Yeah, so yeah. And, you, and that's in so my cool. morning jacket. Yeah. Okay. I And I go, like, I love them all so much. And I've seen, you know, I've seen Pearl Jam over a hundred times at this point and i've seen um my morning jacket 45 times or something like that and i've seen slater kenny like 30 some so i think it's just like they're always like i love all of them for different reasons you know what i mean like pearl jam has like been with me my whole life and then my morning uh, and then slater kenny i actually got into because i've seen them open for pearl jam and then um my morning jacket I got into later and it's just, if that's the, if that's the band that's touring right now and I'm following them on tour, they're like my current favorite. <laughs> Cause I'm so like hyped and in that space, you know, headspace. Cause that's like who I'm seeing and I'm just so jazzed. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to the next show and the next show. So it depends on the, the day. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat with you, especially like, you know, it, it really all depends, but yeah, like my morning jacket, I got hooked on in 2005, 2006 when I saw them open up for Pearl Jam in DC and when mm-hmm. they, and when, and God, you know, when Jim starts singing, you're like, what the hell is that voice coming from? And it's just like, you know, I don't think you could see my morning jacket and not remember like those shows, like they, you know, different set lists, the way they play, the way they look, their style, their, it's, it's, it's a beautiful experience. And I, and that's something I, you know, I don't take for granted. They're one of, one of my, they're probably one of my top five favorite bands. Um, and I, and it's funny because I've bumped into you at many of their shows as well. For some reason, mm-hmm. it just seems like we cross paths often, but my Morning Jacket is, pro- I think, is one of the most underrated bands of the last 20 years. I really think they should be in, in a bigger conversation um, when it comes to, like, what is rock and roll music nowadays? Because I believe yeah. they are at the forefront. Um, you know, a, a lot of people yeah. talk. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just like, as you're talking, I'm just like thinking of all this stuff I want to say. <laughs> um, but like with My Morning Jacket, what's interesting, because I started doing fan portraits with Pearl Jam first, and then I started with My Morning Jacket. And I think what drew me to them even more once I started to go to some shows was meeting their fans and they have an amazing, like hardcore dedicated fan base like Pearl Jam does. And, um, that was just, that really drew me in and then seeing their passion for the band. And when I start, I did fan portraits a couple of times. And the first time it really took off was when, um, I went out to see jacket at, um, Red Rocks. Mm. And um, everybody there was just like really excited to do fan portraits and seeing that that passion was cool. But I, I, for me, like my, like my three favorite bands are all connected for me. Cause like you said, cause I saw Slater Kinney open for Pearl Jam. I saw my morning jacket open for Pearl Jam and I have stories where it's all connected. Like I, I remember when um, my morning jacket played, they do this one big holiday thing. Um, in the Mexico last one City. I did it was at Punta Cana in Dominican Republic, but the first two years was at um, Rivera Maya in um, Mexico. So they do like the resort thing, you know, like a lot of bands are doing that now. It was a cruise. Some people do the cruises, but they just do like at a resort. And I remember um, the fr- I went to it three times in the first year. I ran into Bo, the keyboard player, um, after the show, um, after the last night. And um, I mean, he's normally pretty like introverted and shy. Um, and, uh, but he had had a few drinks in, so he was very ch- chatty. It was like three or four in the morning. And, um, he just was like asking us questions. And I was like, yeah, I got into you guys. Cause I saw you open for Pearl Jam. And he was just saying the nicest things about Pearl Jam. He was like, they, he was like, those guys were so nice to us. They taught us like about the music industry and how to navigate it and you know what to do. And it was just so cool. Like my mind was blown, like hearing these guys I admire so much talking about another bands and all these other band, like these other guys that I admire so much too. So that was just really neat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, so I got to meet Jim, um, after my, so my son actually saw him. So we saw him in Charlottesville. That was a show you couldn't go to, but we were texting the entire time. Yeah. I was supposed to go to that. <laughs> yes. And we were texting the whole time. And, um, after the show we're leaving, um, and uh, this venue and my son have a very unique experience, and it's a Jack White story I'll have to share. But um, we were leaving, and my, my son's like, oh, that's Jim. I said, no, Brady, that's not Jim. Jim. And it was. And he was just walking, no one around. 
and we got to meet him and he signed this poster and was talking to my kid. And um, I just realized, and it was like that point too. I was like, this is like, this, like, and he kept talking about like why, because Brady was like talking about music he loved and stuff. And, um, and it, they were just interacting and I was just like, God, it was just, and it was just like off the high of the concert. Cause that's the one thing I love about music is like, there's like this progression of like this natural high, you get into it. Cause you're the excitement of going to the show. Then you have the excitement of the show and then it's living off the high after the show. And you know, you do it and I do it. And a lot of people that are saying hi right now um, are as well as like, afterwards seeing your friends that you don't see very often at a local random bar you've never been to and you'll probably never go again and talking about why that was the best show you've ever seen in your life because until every the <laughs> until, the, <laughs> until the next one that's right um <laughs> god it's it's crazy like how much as people like I, I you know I was I was talking to my wife beforehand and I said hey I'm actually doing a show with somebody you know like my wife has no idea who I'm interviewing especially when I interview musicians but she knows you so it was like <laughs> oh she's like oh okay well, um but you know I miss seeing you like it was just like there was like you know when I knew I was touring to see Pearl Jam I knew at some point at one of those shows I was going to see you and we were going to catch up and it's crazy that at the end of this month the 31st of this month which we're doing a special about it's going to be a thousand days since Pearl Jam played the last show. And it's just mind blowing that it's been that long since we've enjoyed the comfort of their music. Right. Yeah. And it makes you think about like the things you maybe you took for granted. Like you just always knew, okay, I was going to get to a show at some point. I was going to get to see my friends at some point. And then that was all like kind of taken away until, you know, if we didn't know for how long. So it is. Yeah. It's strange. It's weird. But, you know, I think it makes you appreciate like how life is and how, you know, how to slow down and just enjoy life for what it is. But it's great. When you look back you know, and I've done this recently to you look back at like the concerts you've been to and, and bring up memories of stuff. Um, what what like stories? What are some of your favorite stories from being like following all these bands that you love? Oh, boy. <laughs> just like think about which one to talk about. um so like just like crazy experiences i've had at the shows there are more about like, no, like so when you and... think like i have like there's five stories that like i hold dearly to myself that are like when i think back to concerts and i talk to people because usually like when you see friends in a long time they're like hey we talk about concert memories like there's always those stories like at this show this happened or that show this happened like when you look back at like all the concerts you've been to what are some of your favorite stories just in general um, besides meeting me, cause I know that's number one, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't, you know, we don't have to talk about that. We can, we can talk about that off air. Um, for, <laughs> um, well, I'm just like, you know, you were talking about, um, your son meeting Jim James. And I was just thinking about, um, the time I met Jim James and it was just really, um, it was just a very interesting night. <laughs> um, so I don't know who all is familiar with them you know, I'm sure those, you know, you guys, those guys listening are big music fans, um, you know, about Newport, um, folk fest. So that's, I'm not in, um, in general, I'm not a big festival person, but I love that fest festival. And, um, I think one thing, you know, that I like talking to Anthony about is that, um, like I love, even though I like, I'm, I always seem to talk about Pearl Jam, I'm wearing a jacket and Slater Kinney. I just love music in general. So I, you know, I listen to all, kinds of stuff like electronica jazz um you know i'll do some country americana folk like i i just love music so i you know i'm into all kinds of stuff and so i went to newport folk fest i've only been once and i'm hoping i'll get to go back again one day but i went in 2017 and it was um out of all the concerts and um any all the concert trips i've been on and music related events and everything that was probably hands down will always be on like the top five music weekends I've ever had. It was just so it's just, um, it's the kind of festival where everybody there is just so into the music and they start like the sets at like 10 AM and the first band will have a full packed audience to watch them at 10 or 11 AM. And that's, you don't see that at other kinds of festivals. And it's just such an awesome like community and everybody's just, I don't know. It's just hard to describe. If you talk, if you know somebody's been to it, or if you've been to it, um, you, you understand that connection. But um, it was just a great weekend, and I didn't even know like a lot of the bands playing. And I left, you know, discovering all this new music. Uh, but um, so that's on a serious note. But on a more, 
on a funny note, so when I met, um, so like a lot of festivals do like the late night after show, um, like parties or um, concerts, that's like a thing now. Um, so um, it was um, Deer Tick, um, they're from Newport, Rhode Island, where this festival takes place. So they used to always do um, shows at the, the small local bar every night after the festival, because the festival ends like at 7.30, because it oh, wow. starts at 10 or 11. Yeah, so it's like very different kind of festival, but it's cool because you have time to like chill and hang out and then go to these late night shows and still get some sleep in before you have to start the next day and go line up. But um, so I was at this bar and um, I had met, you know, I've been following Jacket for a while at this point and I've met everybody in the band and I've even had taken, um, you know, at that point I'd taken Tom, um, the bass player's fan portrait but I, I just hadn't met Jim and you know, I don't, I'm not the type of person who like usually waits after shows to try to meet band members. I just see if it happens, it happens. Um, so, and I was like so exhausted that night and my allergies were awful and I just wanted to go um, to bed and take a, like a Sudafed or Benadryl. My friends like, no, it's the last night come out. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to hang out in the back. Cause for those who know me, I always have to be up front by the stage, <laughs> but I was like, I'm going to just be low key and not <laughs> fight for being up front tonight. And I was just hanging out back and um, there was Jim at the bar, um, like ordering a shot mm -hmm. of tequila. And my friend was like, just go say hi. And I'm like, oh, I don't, don't want to be that person. He's just having a good time. So we went over and I just was like, you know, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just want to say hi. I just, um, you know, I'm a big fan and you're set. He did a solo show that at the festival. And he was like, oh, you know, isn't this place like magical? And it was just um, so great to meet him, but he was, um, pretty intoxicated and um, a deer tick just was covering um, oh what's the song um, they did uh, Kashmir by Led Zeppelin and then they went into um, uh, Iggy Pop the Stooges I want to be your um, be your dog yeah I want to be your dog yeah um, drawing a blank and um, I love that song and so the next thing I know Jim comes over to my friend and I and gets in between us with um a bottle of beer like Sierra Nevada or something and he starts singing into the beer bottle like it's a mic and he starts hand passing it over to us to sing with him so the three of us are like singing to a mic together like rocking out to the song and then I was like oh my god is this really happening am I singing with James I was like <laughs> so that was that so besides from that weekend just being magical awesome weekend of music um it just had some extra bonuses <laughs> <laughs> that was not unexpected. That, that, <laughs> like that. <laughs> that is a good one. Um, I will, you know, we've had, a, um, when I first met you, I was photographing concerts pretty heavily at that time. Um, yeah. And one of my favorite concert stories was, um, it wasn't shortly, it wasn't long after the, the Made in America Festival. Um, I had, I photographed a lot of concert, uh, country concerts and I photograph it and then I'd leave. Like I did my assignment, then I would leave. And Blake Shelton was coming to town and I didn't even know who the hell he was, but my wife's like, Hey, I like Blake Shelton. So I gave her the tickets that I would get from the show for her and her sister. Yeah. And this is right when FaceTime came out. So I'm in the back. And usually when you are photographing or an assignment, a lot of times you go in the back and they tell you like what three songs you can photograph, like what's like where, what you can do, mm -hmm. your rights, you have to sign waivers, all that stuff. So I'm in the back and they're actually cooking barbecue on this huge trailer and this guy's cooking barbecue and I'm BSing with them for 30 minutes, just bullshit. And I think we were, I don't even remember what we were talking about, just, just, just nonchalant and whatever. And um, my wife FaceTimes me. And I, I answer, you know, hey, what's going on? She's, I'm like, did you get your seats? We're talking and everything like that. And her face turns white. I'm like what the, like, what the hell's going on? She goes, "Where are you?" I said, "I'm, I'm eating food." Why? She goes, "Look who's behind you." Yeah, look who's behind you. I said, <laughs> "I'm said, the guy cooking barbecue." I said, "That's Blake Shelton." I said, "What?" So yeah, for like the last thirty five minutes, the guy that's cooking my cooking my uh, it was I think it was ribs was literally Blake Shelton. He was cooking <laughs> in the back for everyone, and that's something that he did, and I respected him for it. But yeah, like I really, and it didn't like click until at, when I was photographing later that the guy who cooked my ribs, which were actually really good, was Blake Shelton. That's funny. My, I, one of my other top, um, well, two, one of my other top favorite, um, concert experiences, um, was when I got a tambourine from Ed, but mm. you know, from Eddie Vedder, but how could you not, if you've ever seen the tambourine from him, I don't know how you can't put that in your top favorite shows, but this was, um, then it, um, 
uh, one of my um, best uh, touring friends, Michelle, who I we met back in 2003, standing in the 10 club line um, to pick up our tickets in Camden. If for everybody who's been to, did you ever, have you ever been to um, Camden to see Pearl Jam? Camden, New Jersey. Camden, I thought I've seen them in Camden. Yeah, or, um, like right across from Philly. Yeah, so yes. that place, it's just like a shithole. So <laughs> it, it, that's most of New Jersey. Let's be realistic. Hey, well, <laughs> I'm from <laughs> New Jersey, so uh. <laughs> parts of it are. But um, Camden, everybody just knows Camden sucks. Like, it, and, but people go because they want to see their band. So, um, sure. so um, I was with Jen, who um. um my other like longest touring buddy, um, her first, I took her to her first Pearl Jam show, which is actually state college, which is crazy. Um, because the whole time, um, we met cause we were living in the same, uh, dorm hall together in college and at state college, I, I kept turning, like looking at her and being like, this isn't a, this isn't a typical Pearl Jam show. This is, <laughs> they don't usually play this long. This is crazy. This doesn't <laughs> usually happen. You're spoiled. This after the <laughs> first show. Um, but then, you know, later that summer, then, uh, Pearl Jam was in Camden and, so anyway, we we're picking up 10 club tickets and Michelle was in line behind us. And then it turned out our seats were near each other and our 10 club members are really close together. So we then kept seeing each other at shows because our seats would be near each other. So we finally connected anyway. So all over 15, God, 20, almost 20 years now, wow. 19, 18 years we've been doing this. I can't count, but it's been like, I think eight, 17, 18 years. But anyway, so, um, uh, where was I going with this? Oh, so she, so when, um, one of my favorite Pearl Jam weekends ever um, is the um, the Spectrum shows, and they close out the Spectrum in October oh, Halloween weekend. So yeah, two thousand nine. Yeah, just completely bonkers, like amazing. So I was in grad school. Um, my I've talked about grad school earlier. That was my second attempt grad school. First attempt grad school. <laughs> I, did, I did. I did finish that and got my master's. <laughs> that just, was, just took a little but, bit. <laughs> but um, I was all my classes were in the evening. And so the shows were um, at evening classes. So shows were Tuesday, Wednesday. And I was so like in grad school mode. I was like, well, I don't know if I can like skip class. And, you know, pe people hearing me say that is like what Tanya is actually saying that because I just I missed my very first day of um, uh, classes in undergrad as a, um, my first day as a freshman. I was like, oh, they're only going to give the syllabi. This doesn't matter. And I drove out. To Columbus, Ohio, to see Pearl Jam on the binaural tour. So yeah, there's nothing that stops me ever from getting to a show. Mm. But um, so I didn't buy tickets. I didn't put in for ten club tickets for the first night of the Spectrum shows. But then Michelle did, and she was like, "Well, nobody's going with me, and I got tickets. Do you want to go?" And I was like, "Okay, I'll go, but I, I might be late because I have class." But um, the electricity went out in the building where my class was supposed to be that night, um, and so class got canceled. So Michelle and I got there right, like like right like at 7:20 and social D came on at 7:30 and um so this is before they added GA again so we um go to the 10 club window or yeah box office window pick up our tickets and we didn't know where they were we were just like okay we you know we're get we're late let's go in and they kept telling us to go down go down to so the next thing we know we're on the floor and then they walked us to the first row Jesus. So, and that, and so that was like my 40 something Pearl Jam show at that point. And I had never been first row because before GA was brought back again, it was like really Just, hard to get first rowers in the first few rows. You had to know somebody and then, um, or when they started the lottery for rows one, they did rows one and two, I think at nine and 10 or something like that. So, yeah. Some crazy thing. Like that. Yeah. Unless you won the lottery. Like, I mean, it was, it was hard. <laughs> you couldn't, it, you know, now if you're willing to camp out for two or three days, you can get well, you know, it's the reason I stay, I still talk to my dad's um, ex-girlfriend from 92. Um, oh. And she's an amazing woman, um, Natalie. She lives in California now. Um, and the reason I was second row at Pearl Jam 20, standing shoulder to shoulder Dennis Rodman, is because of her amazing 10 club number. But thankfully, that relationship didn't work out. And uh, we're still friends. And I uh, I get I get great seats sometimes. That, because it works. Yeah, so... We had never been, you know, front row. And so we, you know, we were, it was just, it was just a bonkers that night. So we were just losing our shit. And um, they played, um, they're, um, gosh, they, I think it was like in my tree. And then they went into stay alive and trust. Um, no, 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 it was mankind. It was mankind. Cause we were in front of stone. Um, we were all the way far that side of the stage and we were in front of stone. And I was like, what we happened to be in front of stone actually playing mankind. Like that's, 
awesome. Rare. And then, and then um, I remember I kept like looking over at everybody else and, you know, Ed was back by the drum kit playing the tambourine and he kept looking over our way, but like, you know, there's these really tall guys next to us and Michelle and I like were short and, you know, like they can't see me. Like Ed's not looking over here. And then after the song ended, he um, walked over and handed me the tambourine, like put it right in my face. And I, you know, I never met anybody in the band. It was before I started fan porches, before I, you know, any of that other craziness in my life happened um, with music. So I was just like, I literally froze. Like Michelle had to elbow me so I could pick up my arms <laughs> to grab the tambourine from him. And I remember when I got home that night, I was living at home at the time with my parents and my mom was like, why didn't you get him to sign it? I was like, mom, I wasn't going to ask him to sign it. <laughs> We're in the middle of the concert. But yeah, that, that I, that was such a high, like I lived off of that high for like a while, like for months. It was just incredible. So just moments like those, you know, you go into the show we just were, you know, we were just like, we're going to have a great time because I'm with one of my best friends and it's live music, this band we love in Philly. Um, it's going to be great. And then just the unexpected happens. <laughs> that's the beauty of it. I mean, that's a good, that's a great thing about all shows. I think it's like the shows that you don't expect or like, it's a, like a last minute things turn out to be like the better ones. Like, you know, um, coincidentally, the electric goes out in your school. We'll just say coincidentally. I mean, I think we're, I think we're past legal jurisdiction where they can get you in trouble for hitting the switch. Um, but, <laughs> but no, it's, you know, it's, I think, you know, one of the greatest shows I've ever seen was Temple of the Dog in Philly night one. Oh um, uh, yeah. And I wasn't supposed to go to that. I had gotten tickets the night before at eight o'clock oh, wow. and, and drove, got up at four in the morning and drove to Philly and drove straight home because I had to work. And that was, to me, is probably one of the greatest concerts I've ever been to in my life. Like that was just magical. And, and that was before even knowing, you know, like what was going to happen to Chris. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you still thought it was magical. And now, you know, where we are now, being that much more thankful that you got to go, like that, that it worked out. Yeah, you know, it's – and the crazy thing with Chris, you know, in general is, like, I think I didn't really appreciate – because I was never a big Soundgarden fan. Like, I, you know, and I, and I appreciate I appreciate the music. It just never it never resonated with me as it much did other people. Like, I'm not a big Alice in Chains fan either, and people adore Alice in Chains. And it's just – it just it, those two bands just weren't, like – it just never like, – I, I appreciate the hit, the hits, but, like, I never really could get into, like, the catalog. Yeah, you didn't, like, dive deep with them or anything. Correct, but then, like – you know, with Temple of the Dog, I, I mean, I remember listening to that album when I was little. Like, I remember that album. Like, I remember the cover. Like, I remember it was in my dad's CD collection. or pulling it. Like, it was just, it was special. And hearing that, it was the first time they ever played and all those memories. And I had seen them at Pearl Jam 20, but this was actually, like, them. You know, it's it, it's what makes things magical. It's like I'm looking at the poster now from that show, you know, across the, across the studio and I just remember, you know, seeing people that I know was supposed to be there. One of my greatest tour buddies, Daryl, was there. And we didn't even know we were going to be at the same place. And, you know, uh, just so many great people. And then, like, Chris, there was no screens. There was no pyrotechnics. So it was not, it was just them. And mm -hmm. that's what music's about. It's, it's like the simplicity of it. And it was just so beautiful that you could hear this man, you know, God, you know, say hello to heaven. You know, hearing that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after he passed, I dug deeper into him and his solo stuff. There's a lot of his solo stuff. And then like recently with, you know, um, the Guns N' Roses cover, which I think, uh, yeah. God, I think he killed it. I think he it's, it's better than Guns N' Roses, personally. Um, you know, it, it's just, and you start listening to a lot of his music and then you're like, God, it just, it makes you appreciate him. And then it like, it's one of those things, he's a very underappreciated person. I, to me personally, and this just, this might be a very unpopular opinion. I think he might be one of the, he might have one of the most the best voices out of any American singer. Well, his, and his voice was so um, distinct though. Like as soon as you heard it, like you were like, okay, that's Chris Cornell. You know what I mean? He had like one of those voices. So yeah, I, I went to, I was at both of those shows and then I saw them um, when Temple of the Dog played them at Madison Square Garden. I went to one of those shows in New York. So yeah, yeah that was, I saw him solo once too. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, I, and then and then PJ twenty when he was yeah. yeah that that was my favorite Chris Cornell moment seeing him at PJ twenty 
Because I had never. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, Pearl Gem 20, I was talking to someone the other day about this. And, you know, we have someone uh, tuning in right now. I want to give a shout out to someone. And and I usually don't do this during the show, but I really want to give a shout out to someone real quick. Uh, Randy from Live on Four Lakes podcast. He does an amazing job digging deep into um, live concerts. He gives a lot of stats. He gives some great feedback. He listens to the show. So if you're into like. Like what we're talking about, like digging deep into shows, I would highly recommend. He's got an amazing podcast. Um, check him out. Definitely give him a listen because if you like us just babbling about concerts, you want to dig in deep, I would definitely give that show a listen. Um, but what's really cool about Pearl Jam 20, when I think back to it, was like going into it, there was this hype. Like, is Chris Cor- is Chris going to be there? Like, I remember all the message yeah. boards. Is Chris going to be there? The- Chris has got to be there. He's part. Like, you know, what is, what is it going to be? And then I remember the posters ruined it because the first person <laughs> that came out said CC. And like, come the fuck. Like, everyone knew it was him. And then the- everyone was so excited about it. But then, like, I remember going back to the hotel and reading the message boards. And people were bitching that he was on stage too long. And I'm like, what? Like, it was like, you know... <laughs> Somebody's always got to complain about something. Oh, God. It's, you know, uh, it's, listen, I will tell you that Pearl Jam 20, in retrospect, I still don't know why we don't have like a box set or something from it because it was, to me, it was such a magical experience. Do so you remember night two? Someone lit one of those fucking like candles, the flying Roman candle, and it got caught on, under the damn thing. And yeah, like, yeah, it was, yeah. oh my God, it was, um, yeah. It, it's amazing. I, I love it. It's, it, it's, it's all great stuff. Um, it, it, it really is crazy to think that like these, that's what memories are like to me, like the, you know, when I think back to going, like my wife, I try to explain to her why I go to concerts and stuff and, or why, like, you know, like our friendship means something like, you know, besides like going to concerts and, and seeing you on Facebook, that's really all I know about you. Like I, you could be a serial killer for all I know on the <laughs> side, and, but and I mean, Hey, you do what you got to do. But like, you know, it's, like I look forward to it. 90% of my friends or the people I know are because of touring and getting that relationship. My best friends that I talk to on a daily basis are going through the, the shows and talking to them t- today. Today I talked to four different people and all four of them are because of seeing Pearl Jam and getting to know them. And we talk yeah, consistently absolutely. because of them. Um, and and I was what- doing it. I was doing it before social media, like um, on the 2000 Pearl Jam tour, I was 18 and, um, you know, like I alluded, you know, referred to earlier that I was, you know, didn't really connect with anybody at my high school. I felt pretty, pretty lonely and stuff. So I was on the message boards all the time for music and Pearl Jam. And that was, you know, the beginning days of all that. And um, I connected with people. And I remember um, it was before cell phones and I was already starting to travel to go to shows. And um, I would tell people, um, you know, OK, uh, I'll be at the box office look for the dorky Indian kid with you know, the green book bag and blue <laughs> ring jacket sitting by the box office. And I was meeting like people. And back then that was like ludicrous to meet, like meet up with somebody from the internet at a show that you had never met with before in person. And they could be like some creeper, you know, whatever. But I was just doing it from the beginning. Cause I just, well, it's, you know, that's how I connected with people. And that's how I made a lot of my friends. So yeah, it's, it's always been a big part for me too. And this is before catfish. So we didn't really know. <laughs> How crazy, because <laughs> always, do, I don't know if you remember this, back in the day, all you would do is ASL. Do you remember the old ASL? Yeah. Good. You'd be like, you'd be like you get into a room, ASL. And yep. it was, it's age, sex, location. Like, it was just yeah. like that. That's And we believed it. Like, we believed who we were talking to. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I you know, it's interesting. It's very interesting, like, how things have changed in retrospect to that stuff. Um, and, and, like, how we went to concerts back in 2000s. And then that was, you know, they had boards and stuff, but it wasn't like Facebook and social media groups Mm -hmm. and like, you know, that kind of stuff. And then it went into like MySpace really didn't have, it was like MySpace didn't really do it. I mean, you had the butterflies on your page, like you'd click on someone's profile that you, and then it would like a butterfly would show up and then it'd be like some terrible song and be like, you know, and Do you, and like, you remember, like, it took yeah. forever to load their effing page, but you had to sit through damn no doubts. I'm just a girl with a damn butterfly <laughs> and a rainbow and all this shit just to, just to like, to see if you're the, one of their top five friends. Um, damn MySpace days. I met my wife on MySpace. Um, but then, like, Facebook kind of took off, but it wasn't really, I wouldn't say that really internet really trended how concerts are nowadays until probably like a 2012. I, I mean, I think that's. I would, 
Yeah, I think that, yeah, I would say 2012, 2013. That's when I started to see it begin. Yeah, the beginning of that really happening. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to say, I had one other story. Uh, let me, I was trying to think of some other, like some other bands I could talk about. <laughs> it's interesting stories, but um, I guess I'll say one slitter. Oh, we were talking about like, um, like you would sit, you know, Temple of Dog at Tower Theater, like it, you didn't know you were going to be at that show till the night before. That was, um, um, that happened. My, one of my, I've done a lot of last minute um, trips to shows. Michelle and Jen, who I, my friends I talk about, they always make fun of me because I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to do that many shows this tour. I'm, I'm just going to do one or two or, or just like 10. And then I end up doing like half the tour, <laughs> the, whole, the whole tour. And they, so they never listen to me or believe me when I say that. It's always like famous last words. And I always get, I'm like, yeah, okay, you were right. Um, but uh, I was, it was 2015. I went out to Seattle um, to do Flight to Mars. It was my first time doing Flight to Mars. I heard it was like really um, a fun experience. And I love Seattle. So I was like, right, I'm going to go out there. And I had a great time. And then I flew back took the red eye and I got back Monday morning and my friend Jeff was like, Jeff Weiss, um, who, uh, him and um, Trisha um, Serrano, I was doing a lot of the Slater Kitty shows with um, that year. And they were like, um, well, Jeff was like, well, I'm going to Seattle um, for this week to see Slater Kinney play three nights um, at the show box to close out their tour. And the shows were, um, yeah, it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I was like, you know, I, there was no way I can do that. I just, I literally just got back from Seattle like Monday morning and he's telling me on Tuesday. And then I was like, you know, my boss isn't going to let me do this. Like there's no way. And, <laughs> and, um, I looked up my, uh, frequent flyer miles and I was able to get, find a ticket, um, that I didn't have to pay for. I could use my miles. Um, and it was available for Wednesday. No, no, Thursday morning. And my, and I had a hard rule, never fly the day of a show. Because mm -hmm. I just, you know, I always hear, the, hear those stories. and But I was like, well, I'm going to go for it. And so I asked my boss and she's like, okay, I'll you know, let you take the time off. So literally I got back Monday morning. I'm flying back to Seattle Thursday morning. And I had a layover in Las Vegas. And then I get there and I drop my stuff off at my friend. Allie was letting me stay with her. And I get to the venue. Um, so it's just a crazy week. But, um, you know, as m most of the guys, you know, the guys in Pearl Jam are big Slayer Kinney fans. Um Eddie Vedder was at the show, um, like side stage with, um, with Jill. And, um, I didn't even notice it at first. Somebody pointed it out to me. Cause like, I was just so focused, you know, I love Slater Kenny so much. I was just like, you know, having a great time. And, um, I think after the show, um, Corn gave me her guitar pick. And so I was just like losing my, you know, losing my shit. I was like, Oh my God. And then, um, uh, my friend's like, um, you know, let's go say hi to Eddie. And I'm like, wait, what Eddie? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> like I had to like, focus and um he at first I thought thought you know just like another fan being like oh like I love you like I want to say hi and then I just was and then he um once he heard what I was saying he um there's like a like a railing in between us he came up close to me and was like oh okay because I was like you know I just want to thank you guys for bringing Slater Kenny on tour with you um on the Riot Act tour because th thanks to that I just flew over from the East Coast to see, you know, one of my favorite bands play three nights in a row here. And he was like, oh, wow, that's like really cool. And, um, you know, like you get intimidated when you meet. Now, this is my, I think, my second time meeting him. Um, but it doesn't matter. It's Eddie Vedder. It's so like intimidating and nerve wracking. But I think what was so cool about meeting him in that setting was that um, it wasn't about like Pearl Jam. And he yeah. was just like, oh, you're you're a fellow music fan. And here we are two people who love Slater Kinney. And we just started talking about well, what the show is about and how like, you know, what a great time it was in the set list and this and that. And then he's like, well, isn't and the conversation at the end, he gets up real close to me and has this big grin and he gets in my face and he's like, wasn't it cool? They closed with modern girl. Like, um, I guess like referring, like that's my favorite song. And I know he covers that, you know, he tags that song at the end of not for you. Um, at the Pearl Jam shows. I know you love that song, but <laughs> I'm like, um, I'm such a dork and I'm like a nerd and um, uh, can be like a music snob. So for me, I like Modern Girl, but for me, it's like their one like popular song and not their best song at yeah. all in their catalog. So <laughs> I literally said to him, I, and I called him Ed. I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's cool, Ed. <laughs> I just like, <laughs> I said, yeah, that, that's real cool, Ed. I called him out on it. 
<laughs> but I wasn't, I, I, I don't really drink at shows or anything. I was totally sober. And I, I was like, I just said that to him. And then he looked at me and it was like, okay. And then he digs his hand in both his jean pockets and pulls out guitar picks from both po pockets. I guess he just is always carrying guitar picks yep. with him to give out to people. Uh, yeah. He never knows when he's gonna, but somebody's gonna run. He's gonna run into a fan, and he so he puts them in his palm, and then he's like digging through them, and he finds a specific one that he wanted to give me, and he just said, "Here you go," and he just gave me a smile and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! That now I, like, that, I had I had that's balls crazy. to call him out, and he knew it because he knew I was like a real fan. <laughs> oh my God, that's that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Um, it's one of my favorite stories. <laughs> oh, you, that, that's a, God, that's a great one. You know, um, I do, I haven't thought about this in a long time, but you had mentioned the flying of the day of the show story and how mm. much of a nightmare it could be. I do have a nightmare story. Oh no. It's a quick one. Um, so I was doing, you know, I did Denver and all those shows. I think that was what, 2014. Um, yeah. and I had, so a buddy of mine had extra in Nebraska. He's like, Hey, come out to Lincoln, Nebraska. So, um, no, it wasn't Lincoln. It was the, um, it was, Mil it was the Milwaukee show because Lincoln, Nebraska, I flew out to thinking that's where Abraham Lincoln was from, went a day early, realizing that Abraham Lincoln's never even been to Lincoln, Nebraska. So I went there a day early to go tour Lincoln, Nebraska, thinking that it was to be about Abraham Lincoln and then come to find out he's not even from fucking a Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> so, um, that was an embarrassing, but no. So, um, when I went to Milwaukee, I went the day of, and that's when they played yield and, um, I got to the show. I, well, I flew in. I got landed. My flight got delayed because they had they the it was they had a hard time landing the planes, which is circling the fucking airport. So I didn't land until three forty five, and I didn't pack anything. Like I only had like me and a bag, like a backpack. I got to the show, and I was like, for the first like seven songs, I was just like, I was doing my best to keep my fucking eyes open. And from that day on, I was like, I will never, ever ever fly on a day of a show it was just a mis and it was such a beautiful show and there was so much cool i didn't get a poster from the show because i didn't get it in time it was sold out by the time i got there and you know it, it was just it was and it i love the show so nervous like it's <sighs> just like oh my god i'm gonna get there in time i it's just too stressful for me yeah the whole time I'm in, I'm in the airport and I'm like trying to get to right, get to like the, the taxi and I'm like my stomach's and knots. And I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I gotta get a poster. And I get to the poster sold out. And then this is I'm like, like, I, For, I up, um, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Well, um, when I flew to um, for Wrigley, I didn't go in 2013, but I did Wrigley in 2016. And Michelle and I were, um, I remember we were sitting, um, we had landed in Chicago, but we were um, still on the runway. They wouldn't let us, get to our gate there was like you know a backup airport traffic and here i am on facebook and everybody's um freaking out because um, remember when everybody thought they um Pearl Jam was going to do a secret show on the um roof of murphy's and it ended up just being really doing some video footage what was going to end up being for um uh you know the film danny clinch did and everything yeah. but nobody knew um let's play too sorry yeah that was yes funny thing. and um but i didn't know that and so <laughs> I'm like, I'm just like, it was the worst feeling ever. I was like, I'm just, I'm so close to there, but yet I'm not, I'm stuck on a plane and they could be playing a show that I'm put on. It's just stuff like that that just like gets to you. <laughs> oh, it really is. It's, um, yeah, the nerve wrecking. And you know, I love, like, I love GA. Like I like standing in line, but then like, I also hate like the whole, like you have to spend so much time in line to get a good, to get a good spot. And then like, I like, socializing with people and the bad thing is i don't know if you've ever been in a ga line and you didn't like the person in front of you and behind you that can make for a miserable experience um and, and listen i'm not the most likable person so i'm pretty sure i'm a pain in the ass in line so i can't imagine that people are having a good time around me so it's 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 you know i don't know it's but I miss that. I'd rather be in line with an asshole in front of me, an asshole behind me and like be and like know that i'm going into a show than you're you know, there yeah, yeah, I did. Um, when you talked about flying to Milwaukee, I flew um, into the 2016 tour. Um, my friends, you know, they did the the bunch of shows in Florida, and um, my friends, um, uh, Chris Menard and uh, Chris Legan, they were doing all the Florida shows, and 
Um, I, you know, my group, we flew down and had just, we were just going to do Fort Lauderdale in Miami. So I flew back from Miami um, Sunday night. Or was it Miami then? For, no, Fort Lauderdale was first. Yeah, then Miami. And then um, they played Tampa on Monday, I think. Oh, God. See, I'm usually so good with this. COVID and the pandemic. I'm usually like, I'm like right on with my dates and the, the sequence and everything. I'm out of practice. Do you know what I love about doing live shows, though? Is like, I guarantee you within three minutes that Somebody's somebody gonna is going to, is going to be put up here. And I'm going to appreciate the hell out of them um, yeah, that they I, will fix this because there's people out there that literally know this shit, like the back of it. And it's a, and like, the and I used thing. To be like that. <laughs> oh God. Okay. So they played t- anyway, they played Tampa. I just can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was a Monday. They played Tampa and I'm in. Um, uh, so like when I get off the plane from Miami in Philly, I actually don't go home. I go straight on um, to, another concert to see Ben Harper. So mm-hmm. then I finally go home that night and sleep. And then it was Monday, I think that Pearl Jam was in Tampa and I'm back in Philly to see another show. And um, and I couldn't even concentrate because I, oh, here we go. Wait, what was it? It just- I got it. It's- Yeah, oh, so Miami was first. Oh, yep. and then, why did I think, see, oh gosh, I'm slacking. Okay, so yeah, Tampa was on the 11th. Okay, perfect, thanks. That's very helpful. Okay, <laughs> so Tampa, um, and I'm at this other concert in Philly and I can't even concentrate. So I go to the back. It's just like a GA show, like small club show. So I'm at the back, like on my phone the whole time watching the set list coming for Tampa. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to get back down there. I have to go to Jacksonville for the last show of the tour or the last show of the Florida run. And um, so I, um, so I flew, so um, Jacksonville's on the 13th. So I flew um, on the 12th. I, uh, after after work, I go straight to the airport and I get into Jacksonville at like 11 p.m. at night. And my friend uh, Chris comes and picks me up from the airport and I go straight to the GA line. And luckily it was, you know, Florida. So the weather was warm. So all I had was my book bag and like a blanket and like I didn't even bring a change of clothes or nothing. And so I basically just did the whole day in the GA line and did fan portraits. And then after the show, went back to the airport and went, uh, got home at like, well, I arrived in Philly at six or seven in the morning and then I went straight to work. (laughs) That's the kind of craziness I do. (laughs) But you know, here's the thing, like, but like, would you, I mean, would you really change it though? Like those are like, that's what, that's like, it's, it's a great memories. It's like, I would would do it all over again. Oh, hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, that's that's what mu- what's so special about music. It's like these stories, and that's why I love do. This is why I w- I've been oh. wor- working on doing the show is because this is what makes this community. There's people out there that they want to share these stories. It's exciting for people to hear. It's like it's just like a fun storytelling time. And they played um, of the earth that night, and that was my. Oh. Everybody has like their um, like their holy grail of the song they're chasing. <clears throat> and I had been chasing that song, and I finally got to hear it. So it was meant to be. <laughs> But, is is there a song you're still chasing though? Um, yes. Um, uh, other side. Mm, I it. love, and I, 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 I've missed. Yeah, I just have not. I've never seen it, and I, I just, I really love that song. I remember when they played it at Bridge School. I didn't go that year, and I was like, oh. But um, yeah, that's probably the only one I'm really chasing. Uh, well, and I to be a completist, I, I never got Bush Leaguer because I've gotten every right. I've heard every album like studio track not counting like stupid mop or anything like that yeah. but um and not in counting lost dogs but like the main studio albums yeah. i've heard every i've heard every song except bush leaguer so mm-hmm. i'm missing that one <laughs> yeah I was, I was curious if they were going to change it up like when they did when they were supposed to tour like going to get like trying to push people to vote to get trump out of office if they were going to do something with that but I, yeah like, what could have been yeah. But I wanted so, to go back to what you're saying about fans. Like I'm, you know, we're sharing all our stories, but um one of like one of the things I love with going to the shows and when I do fan portraits, I meet all these new people and all these new fans. And I love um one of my favorite parts about doing the fan portraits is hearing their stories of how they got to the show, um, what their track, you know what you know what they went through to get to the show or if it was their first Pearl Jam show or they hadn't seen Pearl Jam in years and things like that. That's just, it's just the best part of it all, I think. 
it's, well, you know, that's what's cool. It, it kind of connects us too, because it gives us something relevant to speak about, right? Because yeah. I think one of the greatest things is like, even though I speak a lot on the show, sometimes too much, um, yeah. like, you know, when I'm out in public at these events, pre-parties, line stuff, I kind of keep to myself because I don't know what to talk to people about. Like, I don't know, like, if I'm, I don't know, like, what to talk, like, maybe I'll be better because I've been doing this show for, for you know, for, I don't know, it's, well, I guess it'll be almost a thousand days because I started right after the last Pearl Jam show. Um, you know, it's, it's weird to think, like, like, you know, I, I would, I kept to myself, I didn't know what to talk to people about, but when I did, it was about, like, hey, yeah, you know, we would start talking about things and it would be, like, you know, hey, what are what, what what's your favorite concert? What's which favorite set list? What's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? And it would open up these stories, and it would that would spark conversations, open up other conversations. You know, one of my favorite you know topics that I would bring up, like my go to line, I guess you'd call it my pickup line, I guess in these conversations was like, what was an artist you've never seen live that you wish you had? You know, and that would always bring up, and you know, that's a great question to ask you. What is a musician that you never saw live that you wish you had? Um. Well, David Bowie for sure. Um, and I mean, that's always like my first answer for that. Um, Nirvana as well. Like, so I wasn't the, like you were talking about Soundgarden, Alice in Chains. Like I wasn't the the biggest Nirvana fan, but I always really liked them. They just, I just never got into them the way I got into Pearl Jam. Um, but yeah, I, I wish I could have seen them. That would have been awesome for sure. I but yeah, had, they would still come to mind. I had tickets to see David Bowie. Oh really? Yes, with the Nine Inch Nails, it was David Bowie and Nine Inch Nails a tour. Oh jeez. At MSG, and I was supposed to go, and I had tickets, and I and fuck God, I hate. Like I don't like to say hate, but like I despise the person that convinced me not to go, um, because we're because I end up marrying this woman, which I'm very happy with. But that girl at the time convinced me not to go. She said you can see David Bowie any time. We need to go. No. To <laughs> And I didn't go. And to this day, like she even tried to add me on Facebook like four years ago. I couldn't decline that shit fast enough. Like I was like, you will always bring back that bad memory of like, I could have seen potentially one of the greatest shows and she ruined it for me. That woman can't believe it. It kills me. But yeah, yeah. I, we've all had shows we've missed and wish we could have been at for sure. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it's, I will say this, I, you know, as someone from the outside looking in, um, one of my favorite stories about you, um, and I don't know if I've ever told you this was, um, you were a big supporter of me chasing to photograph Pearl Jam, um, when I was talking about it and getting to it. And, um, you know, I was declined numerous times to photograph Pearl Jam numerous times. And then finally I had an assignment to photograph him in Charlottesville, Virginia. Yeah. And, I remember that. Yep. and I'll never forget walking in and I walked right past you. And there was this moment where we locked eyes, we high-fived, and it was just like this moment of like, I've known you for a while, we knew the whole story, and like, it was kind of like this moment of like, I don't know, it was just like this, it was like this really cool, it was just a really cool experience, because like, you knew how much it meant to me, and you understood like, yeah. why capturing the band was important, like, because I mean, I photographed a ton of people, but like, this was like, this was my World Series, but like, to have that moment with you at that time going in was really cool, and I remember like, my wife and my son and my father were at the show, and afterwards, I told my wife that you were there, you know, at, you know, sitting, you know, you, I had seen you going on the floor and it was a, it was just, it was just a cool experience that we, you know, I got to share with you. So that was a, that's one of my favorite moments seeing you. Cause we had seen each other many times before then. And it was like that, that's and that show was awesome. Um, mm. That was on my 2013 tour. So good. Well, it, it's such an underrated show because, you know, yes. I, well, now listen, I live up the road from Charlotte. I'm in Charlottesville every day. It's where my kid plays soccer. So when they announced a show, like it was crazy. Cause you know, I don't think like, what, first of all, it wasn't sold out. Um, it was, you know, it was at the John Paul Jones range. So it's a small venue. There's really not a bad seat in the place. And I'll never forget when Ed admitted like, Hey, stone wrote this set for more educated. So stone had wrote, you know, the set and it was, and if you go back and listen to this and I, and I, and I don't know, I don't know if Randy's done a, an in-depth <laughs> review of this, but this they is played something, Big Wave, right? Didn't they play Big Wave that night? Because yes. I think that speaking of songs, I hadn't gotten Big Wave until um, that show. Because <laughs> he said he's like he goes, you know, Vir I like to surf in Virginia. He goes, we're not close to the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. We're close enough. Yeah. Yeah. But that, God, that show was like, yeah. 
Oh, it was, it was, it was such a, cause they did that. And then they did, um, Charlotte the next day and the Charlotte show was just, it was, uh, it was, that was my, that's my least favorite Pearl Jam show I've ever been to. Cause it was like, you're on this high. And then Charlotte set list was kind of fluky and they had a lot of, just they played, set, right? um, it was the first time they played, um, oh my gosh. Oh, it was just someone, was it my father's son? No, it was, no, um, no, no. It was, um, getaway. Uh, Oh, at Charlotte. So, because I yes. had done this first leg of 2013, I think I just didn't do like the, um, like the Massachusetts shows that tour. But, um, uh, the last couple shows, like, um, I was holding it. We had been, I was holding up signs for a getaway, and um, I remember at one of the shows, Mike just looked at because I was like, I, that was my favorite track on um Lightning Bolt, and I was like, why aren't you guys playing it? It's such a great like song, and um, I remember Mike um McCready, you know, he looked at me and was just like. I don't know. Like he didn't have an answer. <laughs> and then um, they played it at Charlotte and I, I held up a sign. I said, thank you. But it, it sounded awful. <laughs> it did. Cause I remember Ed said, I think we need to get away from this one or something. And, like, oh. and they still don't play it. You know, they, no, they still don't play that song. Not much. in heavy rotation. So yeah. let me, let me ask you this. Cause with you being a big Pearl Jam fan um, and with everything kind of weird right now, how do you think that first moment like the first, because it's right now, See Her Now Festival is going to be the first show they play, unless they do something beforehand, which it doesn't, it, it, you would, I think we would have known by now. I could be wrong, but I think we would have known by now. Um, yeah. What, that moment, you're in the audience, you're looking at the stage, and we all know that moment. Lights go out, the crowd goes crazy, they yeah. hit the stage. I'm assuming the first song they play is going to be released because I think it makes sense. Like that's the first song they play. Mm -hmm. I think it, it 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 really resonates with what leading up to that moment. How do you feel as a fan waiting over a thousand days to see the band you love and get to see them for the first time that long? How is that? How do you think that's going to feel as the fan seeing that for the first time and that long? Oh man, just hearing you talk about that gave me chills. <laughs> Like, honestly, just thinking about being in that moment because I haven't, I think, I think I haven't allowed myself to go that deep into thinking about it because it, it's just like, it's emotional and it, and it, you know, it's been just such a tough year. Um, you know, just a lot of, in a lot of different ways. I mean, everybody, the pandemic's affected everybody, um, I'm sure differently in their personal lives. So it, it's been, it's been tough. Uh, for me and my family, but um, yeah, but now that the way you described it there, it just gave me chills and I'm just like, oh, I can't wait. I mean, I, I think it's, um, you know, a Pearl Jam show is like our happy place and it's also a place, you know, the song release, it's the release for us. So I think I can just feel like, um, like a weight being lifted off my shoulders and just feeling like, okay, I can breathe now. I'm at, I'm at, this is, the music that heals me. I'm at, you know, with my band, with my people. So, and I, I did see here now, um, before it's a great festival and, you know, Danny Clinch is a huge idol of mine as a photographer. And, um, it's, I think it's just going to be, it's going to be a great first show back for them. You know, when you think, you know, the one thing I love about leading up to a concert, and this is going to be leading up to something even bigger than we've ever done before as fans is that like, you know, we all have, tough times in life. Right. And, and, and as, and one of the great things about like, like, you know, seeing you or anybody at a show that we don't see, like when I see you, I don't tell you about like the problems I have in life. We get to talk about like the happy things. And then we get to talk about leading up to that moment. So mm -hmm. the cool thing about going to a concert and, and leading up to everything is like, you see your friends in the beginning, you wait in line, you get in, you go to the floor and you wait and you get to hear that music and then lights go down. And the one thing I love about releases, like you know, leading up to seeing Pearl Jam, a lot of shit happens in your life. And, and like Fenway 2018 will always be for me the best version of release because there's videos of like outside of Fenway. It was, it was sung beautifully. The fans were so into it. That was such a great crowd. And like when everyone can just, was you know, sing together, you know, release me. Oh yeah. Everything that's been going on the last two years from all of the bullshit, from having to go from, you know, president to president to have to deal with this pandemic, to deal with the difficulties in the country, deal with their own personal lives and everything. Like, I just think that like that moment is made for a crowd of however many just to sing that 
And I, I don't think, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of tears. I really, I mean, it's just, you know, mm-hmm. Pearl Jam means so much to so many different people in so many different ways. And to be able to have that finally um, is magical. Um, I think 2023 is gonna be the year that really defines it for us. Um, it's sad that we're not gonna get a Pearl Jam 30 like we all wanted. Um, you know, I think that's mm-hmm. gonna, that's kind of sad. But yeah, it's, um, I can't wait. I can't wait to see your smiling face um, at, a, at a Pearl Jam show when we can, Really catch up. Um, Can I? Um, I don't know. Are we wrapping up here? It's been a. I don't know how long you usually go for these. I go. I go <laughs> are you going to scream pineapple? Is that the magic? Are we screaming pineapple? I, hey, listen, I get it. No, I, know. I was just going to do. Um, if I could do a shameless uh, a shout out about my book coming out at some point. <laughs> no, th- listen, you, I, I want to hear about this. So we had talked about this because originally when we had talked about you coming on, we wanted to plug um, yeah. the, the show. So originally, yeah, I was going to have the book um, ready to, uh, to go um, kind of along with the um, the tour for, you know, it's supposed to happen in 2020. Um, so yeah, I was going to, that was I think one of the first things we talked about being on your show to talk about that. So it's been delayed and, um, you know, I've, I was been busy being pregnant and having a son. So, um, the book's almost finished. So I just got to, um, uh, do some like, you know, final like editing and things like that. Um, but, and I'll be, um, launching a Kickstarter. So I haven't, I don't know, ha- don't have the exact date, but, um, you know, uh, it's fine. I can't, I've been saying for a while it's going to happen, but it is it is going to happen <laughs> finally. Like I said, it's mostly done. I've had some um, people help me out, so that's been great. Um, and I'm excited to finally get, you know, because you know you look at pictures on, you know, just, just speaking as a photographer, you, um, which you understand, like you see pictures um, digitally, but it's it's just never the same as seeing them printed, sure. um, and you know, in a book or just having prints. Um, and I think it really brings them uh, to life. So I'm really excited. And just when you see the collection of the portraits um, and just seeing all the different faces and the different locations and where, why, you know, where and um, why people chose their lyrics because it has stories in it too from, from different fans. So um, yeah, I'm excited to um, share that and get that out. Um, so uh, stay tuned. <laughs> so, are you, so you haven't put out the go the um... Go no, I haven't launched the Kickstarter. Yeah, Quick I was start, kind of waiting to get, see what's happening with Pearl Jam to like piggyback off because you know when they're touring and tour dates are announced, I think there's more um, activity and um, sure. you know I kind of wanted to coincide it with that. So sometime maybe end of this year or next year. Definitely, you know, and I will say that you know you let us give us any information. We'll share it across over social media. Um, and if once your book's ready to go out. You, you know, whatever you need from us, we'll, we'll be here for that. Cause I, I, I know I'll be buying one. Um, I know everyone behind the scenes of touring fan live will be buying one. Um, and I know that people touring in, uh, listening in right now are all saying they want to uh, buy one as well. So I, think I it's know, amazing. Uh, yeah, cause I know you've done one. Jen Bailey's helping you out, right. With touring fan live. Jen Bailey's doing it. Rhiannon and, and Paul, Mish. Yeah. Paul's, um, Paul's. I don't know Rhiannon. I'll have to meet her. Um, but Paul's done a fan portrait. I remember his, um, uh, very clearly actually. So, and I remember Jen's too. So with her daughters, they did smile at Moline <laughs> before oh. they knew Moline was going to be no code night. <laughs> oh, that's, so. that's, that's pretty genius. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, so. yeah. Cause we've, um, I, like I said, I'm trying I have got, I mean, I'm looking at, I have the one with my father and my son. And so the only picture I have of all three of us together like that, I think it might be the only photo of us just all three together is that photo you took of us in Charlottesville. Um, I have the photo of me, my wife, and my son at the first Pearl Jam show. I have a photo of me and my son at another show you photographed. I have a, God, I have a t- every Fenway show, Chicago. God, I have I've been a lot, been a part of a lot of them. Um, yeah, and I, I appreciate your support. It's really um, people like you that I've met and who really supported me and encouraged me to keep going. It's definitely been a labor of love, and I do it all over again, but um it's yeah the support from uh, people like you just has really meant more than i can say so i do appreciate it <laughs> well you're um i will say this you know i've met a, i've met a lot of people on the road um over the god the years i've toured and stuff and 
every tour, there's like a handful of people I really look forward to seeing, and you're always one of them. Um, you've been a delight. You're an amazing person, and like I said, I, I love seeing pictures of your son, and that's amazing. Another, another, like I said, I know I need to yesterday? do a film portrait for him. <laughs> oh, that'd be a good one. You should do that's. We, I'm ex, I should. I want to see that by the weekend. We need that <laughs> ASAP. I'm curious what his lyrics will be. Um, so that that would be great. Um, you know, and the best so. And are you going to do this in the future with the portraits or are you not sure yet how we're going to continue? Um, I would definitely like to continue. Um, I'll just have to see, you know, I used to have a full time job and between being a mom now and stuff like that. So um, definitely plan to continue, have some ideas, possibilities to, uh, for how that will look. So we'll see. Stay tuned. <laughs> well, listen, I will say this. First of all, I hope everyone enjoyed this first episode. I, I picked a rock star of a guest. So I, if you didn't like this one, well, then I don't know what you're going to like. But this was <laughs> this is I, I hit it out of the run. So everything else from here, I'm really going to have to work hard on. But um, if you um, if you're interested or if you know someone that'd be a real good part of Hitchhiker from Stories on the Road that we can talk to you and hear about the stories, send us a private message at uh, Touring Fan Live. Um, Tanya, you can find all of her information. You can like, look at fan portraits on Instagram or Pearl Jam fan portraits on Instagram, on Facebook, or all social media platforms. So you can learn more about where she'll be um, uh, doing them if she does them forward um, and how she gets involved. I'm hoping we can rope, uh, rope her into doing something when we do uh, an event in September. We'll have to wait and see how that turns out um big things coming you know 10 you're a rock you are a rock star if you're just tuning in you missed most of this show uh, you can go back this will be posted on our facebook page but then tomorrow you can find all of these shows and all of our previous shows like aunt rob and anthony's world tour uh let's talk vinyl um an evening with or all of our other shows you can definitely check that out at um going to podcast search the touring fan live they're all in there now, I forgot about something. We have to talk about one thing real quick, and we're going to make a quick uh -oh. – there wasn't really much on there. So today the 10 Club announced um, – oh. the, the, the newsletter came out, and they were talking about the new Deep um, set list. Have, have you even played with this yet or no? No, I looked I looked at it a little bit, and it seems very cool, but I haven't really done too much yet. Yeah, it was thrown in our laps last week. We have to dig into it a little bit more, but it looks like like I know they're doing a whole day of shows where you can like a live listening party. Um, so, you know, Pearl Jam really hasn't announced much. Now, this is a big – you're going to have to dive into it. Um, Randy from Live on Four Legs, who's on here, actually wrote some reviews for some shows. So you can actually – so fan reviews from shows and some backlogs on there. So definitely check that out. Um, there's a new T-shirt on the web store. You can get the deep um, T-shirt with from the Poland show from 2000. Um, but other than that, really not much coming out from Pearl Jam right now. Um, I think this is the quiet before the storm. But who am I to know? Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope. That's right. Anyway, well, listen, Tanya, hang tight. We're going to end the show. We'll say proper farewells off air. But tune in next time. Whenever that is, I don't have the dates in front of me. I just got back from Kansas City. I need to get my shit in order. But thank you so much for tuning into Touring Fan Live. I'm Anthony. That's Tanya. Until next time, keep rocking. I don't know. I, I, have, I, I haven't come up with a clever catch phase yet to end the show, and I, I continuously look like a fool. So <laughs> until next time. Thanks for having me.